Hi, my name is Dante Bortone. I'm a postdoc in the Scanziani lab here at UCSD. In this video abstract, I'll be introducing you to a recent neuron publication from our lab entitled Translaminar Inhibitory Cells Recruited by Layer 6 Corticothalamic Neurons Suppress Visual Cortex. The authors of this study include myself, Sean Olson, who was a postdoc at the time, but is now an assistant investigator at the Allen Brain Institute, and Massimo Scanziani, a Howard Hughes investigator at UCSD. Let's get started with just a brief introduction to one of the primary focuses of the Scanziani lab. The mammalian cerebral cortex can be divided into layers based on neuronal morphology, density, projections, and molecular markers. The Scanziani lab is interested in understanding the impact of these layers on cortical activity and ultimately behavior itself. Recent mouse lines developed by the GenSat Consortium and others allow researchers to express proteins in specific subpopulations of neurons. By expressing light-sensitive rhodopsins in these mouse lines, we can alter the firing rate of a very specific subpopulation of neurons and look at the impact of this altered activity on the rest of the brain. A recent publication from our lab utilized one of these mouse lines, the ntsr one Cree from GenSat, to alter the activity of a subpopulation of excitatory neurons in layer 6 of the visual cortex. In this study, we found that this subpopulation modulated the gain of cortical responses to visual stimuli such that suppressing layer 6 increased activity in the rest of the cortex, while activating layer 6 suppressed cortical responses to visual stimuli. Surprisingly, the inhibition caused by layer 6 activation seemed in large part due to the direct recruitment of cortical inhibitory neurons, as opposed to indirectly by suppressing the thalamus. In this issue of Neuron, we begin our study by asking, is this intracortical circuit sufficient to suppress the cortex independent of thalamic activity in vivo. To test this question, we first needed to activate neurons independently of the thalamus. To do this, in vivo whole cell recordings were performed on neurons in layer 2-3 of the cortex. Injections of current were made to get these neurons to spike. Then, the same step of current was provided while simultaneously activating layer 6 with light. Clearly, the intracortical circuit is sufficient to dramatically inhibit spiking activity in superficial layers independent of thalamic activity in vivo. Other data indicate that layer 6 suppresses all layers of the cortex in a similar manner. We next wanted to define the subpopulation of neurons we were activating in layer 6. Broadly speaking, there are two types of excitatory neurons in this layer. Intracortical neurons, whose axons are confined to the cortex, and cortical thalamic neurons, whose axon projects to the thalamus as well as the cortex. Does the subpopulation of neurons we've been activating include intracortical neurons, corticothalamic neurons, or some combination of both? To test which type of neuron is defined by the NTSR1 Cree line, we crossed the NTSR1 Cree mouse to a TD tomato reporter line so we could visualize the neurons. We then injected fluorescent retrobeads into the thalamus. After several days, these beads are retrogradely transported back up the axon to the cell bodies. We then looked to see what proportion of the NTSR1 neurons had picked up the beads. To our amazement, all of the NTSR1 neurons had retrogradely transported beads from the thalamus, indicating that they are an extremely pure population of corticothalamic neurons. Additionally, of the non-NTSR1 cells, very few, only about 5% of the neurons, had picked up the beads. This not only validates our approach and that not all cells are labeled with beads, but also indicates that the NTSR1 line labels the vast majority of corticothalamic neurons. So we now know that corticothalamic neurons are responsible for the suppression that we're seeing. But remember, we're activating excitatory neurons, and the result is that we see inhibition everywhere. So what inhibitory neuron is this corticothalamic cell recruiting? To answer this question, we cross the NTSR1 line to a mouse line in which all of the inhibitory neurons express green fluorescent protein, or GFP. We did loose patch recordings on these GFP positive cells and then photoactivated corticothalamic neurons of layer 6 to see in what layers these inhibitory neurons are recruited. Only inhibitory neurons in the deeper layers responded to corticothalamic neuron activation, with the vast majority of these cells being located in layer 6 itself. These data also provided us with the spike waveforms of the responding neurons. Shown compared to regular spiking excitatory neurons, these are fast spiking inhibitory cells. So now we have an interesting dilemma. 
The only inhibitory cells recruited by corticothalamic neurons are located in the deeper layers, and yet we see inhibition across all layers. We then hypothesized that some of these fast spiking inhibitory cells must project their axons translaminarly to suppress the superficial layers of the cortex. To test this, we again crossed the NTSR1 mice to the GAD67 GFP line, and then did loose patch recordings to find inhibitory cells that responded to the activation of layer 6 corticothalamic neurons. We then filled responding neurons with biocytin and reconstructed their cellular morphologies. Using this method, we found several cell types, but indeed, there was a population of inhibitory neurons located in layer 6 that extended a translaminar axon to contact all layers of the cortex. We characterized these cells electrophysiologically and found that they were fast spiking with a large after hyperpolarization and little adaptation as compared to excitatory neurons. So to summarize, we've shown that corticothalamic neurons of layer 6 in the visual cortex can suppress the cortex independently of the thalamus by recruiting fast spiking inhibitory cells in the deeper layers of the cortex. These fast spiking neurons extend large translaminar axons superficially to suppress all cortical layers. We're excited by the discovery of this pathway because it may represent a central hub by which the gain of cortical responses can be controlled. In future studies, we will identify molecular markers of this translaminar neuron to help us to isolate these cells genetically. This will allow us to develop strategies to find the presynaptic partners as well as directly modify the activity of these fascinating inhibitory neurons. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy the paper.